Folks, breaking news, Apple now at the exact level that causes it to be in bear market. Right now at $185.65, that is the level. If it closes below that level, that officially puts it 20% off its recent highs, which means it's in a bear market. Apple right now at $185 and change. Annual high, $233. Apple is one real pressure point on these markets, but this weekend's events in Papua New Guinea, another story. Here's the setting. Imagine you're a Tony Award voter and it's a play. The Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit. Emotions running high as trade talks between China and the U.S. reach fever pitch. There we have Vice President Mike Pence leading the show. This one sentence ended up deep sixing any kind of accord. As China said, we're just not feeling it and we refuse to sign on. Here's the line. We agree to fight protectionism, including all unfair trade practices. Everybody was fine with this except China saying, you know what, it calls us out and it and it is, um, I, I guess the exact word they used was they said, it's actually beating up on us. Well, are they admitting something? I don't know. For the first time in APEC history, no standing ovation in the form of an official statement on trade was released by the 21 member group. Now get ready for Act Two in the Trade War Show, setting Buenos Aires, where President Trump will face off with President Xi late next week at the G20. National Foreign Trade Council President and former Deputy U.S. Trade Rep Ambassador Rufus Zhirka is joining us right now. Welcome, Ambassador. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. Uh, this was more dramatic, it almost seemed, than Shakespeare's Richard III. Reports of Chinese officials being hauled away by cops during negotiations, on cue clapping for President Xi and Vice President Mike Pence standing firm in the face of two separate private face-to-face -face meetings with Xi. Are we any closer or further apart from a trade deal with China after this past weekend? Yeah, a lot of fireworks at APEC, but, you know, to some extent, I think that's to be expected. I don't think the Chinese played it very well, didn't help their... Uh, case at all. But, uh, you know, both sides are doing a little bit of, of posturing prior to Buenos Aires to try to gain some advantage with a wider audience of countries. But look, uh, you know, both sides ultimately are going to have to uh, face each other one-on-one uh, -on -one across the table and see if they can do business with each other or whether we're just going to um, resort to this kind of tit-for-tat trade war. Well, as we look at what's been going on, it started in February where President Trump announced that the steel tariffs and the aluminum tariffs of, of 25 percent and, and 10 percent would kick in. Uh, he got props for his tactics because one thing the Chinese have probably not seen in I can't remember when is somebody saying, hey, we really like you guys, but let's get serious. This is ridiculous. You've got to be fair. You've got to stop forcing us to give up our intellectual property in order to do business on the ground. That's not free trade. The Chinese seem intransigent. Do, I mean, what's the best we can expect out of Buenos Aires? Is it, is it a ceasefire? Is it a real deal? I don't think you're going to get a full deal because the things we're asking China to do go pretty deep into their system. But at the same time, you know, the U.S. isn't really going to get the rest of the world uh, mobilized and on its side in pushing China in the right direction on these kind of deep reforms we're asking them to make if we're busy having uh, trade spats with all of them. So... You know, the first thing is the, the administration has tried to resolve the NAFTA uh, uh, negotiations, got a new agreement there, but there are still some problems with these steel and aluminum tariffs. We've got a lot of other countries in Asia and around the world uh, upset at us because of some of those tariff actions. And I think the administration needs to do a couple things, needs to try to resolve those as quickly as they can, move forward to solidify our our position in, in the WTO and bilaterally with these other countries and then be able to bring more effective pressure on China to, uh, to sit down. But I think the best we'll do in Buenos Aires is some kind of a framework uh, between the two sides where they finally agree, okay, let's, uh, let's try mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, set uh, an agenda for right. negotiations going forward. Well, it almost seems like President Trump is right when he says that many a president, both Republican and Democrat, never managed to deal with this very glaring situation. And I understand a couple of decades ago, China had not yet awoken. But as you look at what's happening, we as farmers 
have learned to really depend on the China consumer, for example, the soybean farmers, they are starting to hurt now. Exports of U.S. soy to China have been cut 100 percent. And you have Americans living standards that are padded with cheap Chinese goods. Uh, who's in the better position here? Uh, because uh, you do hear a lot of Americans say, well, it's hurting, but we know we have to put up with this, but for how long? And then you've got China, who puts in these huge infrastructure projects so that they have a built-in way of employing their people. They spend a lot more on infrastructure than we do, so it almost, it almost makes us worry who's in the better position. Yeah, well, look, a trade war isn't going to help either economy in the long term. I mean, obviously, China has a lot to lose if it doesn't have free access to, to, to our market. But at the same time, you know, American companies had their best year ever last year in China. There are trade-offs for us in this fight. I, I think, obviously, we want to see China change. But rapid escalation of tariffs and unilateralism alone just isn't going to get the job done. We need a more sophisticated strategy than that. We need help from the rest of the world. We need to be uh, mm. taking the high ground in terms of building a system of trade rules, because if that's what we want China to do, uh, we have to show the rest of the world that we're prepared to play by those rules, too. Ambassador Rufus Yerksa, thank you, because you're saying that mm, you don't really see a major deal coming out of it. Folks, it looks like we are heading for the most epic trade showdown since the Cleveland Indians traded Rocky Colavito to Detroit. No, it's actually bigger than that. I'll be right there in Argentina for the G20 on November 30th, following every move by President Trump and Xi Jinping, reporting live and hosting Countdown. You never know if the dealmaker-in-chief might come through. Don't miss it.